Hello everyone and welcome to the next in our series of daily origami for YouTube. Today we're going to continue our theme of looking at traditional origami and we're going to make a uh, Hina doll or a empress if you will and uh, then uh, the next time we do a traditional origami we'll be doing the emperor. Uh, what Hina dolls are is basically just an emperor and an empress uh, that you can kind of uh, play around with and traditionally you see them around uh, Hina Matsuri which is the 3rd of March however uh, they're you know a staple and a standard for most little girls and it's a very traditional kind of image so if you're trying to do some sort of creative project with the Japanese theme you can make these two characters uh, these two kind of dolls if you will um, they also work really well for the story of um, uh, Orihime and Hikoboshi from Tanabata, which was on the 7th of July. So, uh, really not just limited to Hinamatsuri by any means. But, like I said, today we're going to start off by making the girl doll, and then uh, we'll also make the boy doll as well. So, um, for today's project, you just need to have one piece um, of uh, square paper. Now I'm going to be using paper that is 15 by 15 centimeter. And uh, I'll just let you guys know the dimensions when I'm done, because I know a lot of times people like to make these and put them on greeting cards or something like that. And knowing the dimensions, dimensions, what the word? That's not a word. Dimensions is a great way to be able to make sure everything fits on the card. So um, generally, it's a good idea to, if you want to, kind of use something more reddish for the girl doll and something more blue or purpley for the boy. Um, if you have some really pretty um, yuzen, like washi uh, paper, the printed, uh, uh, elaborate designed kind of uh, handmade paper, really beautiful for this kind of a thing. Now, warning, you need scissors. I know, hate everybody hates scissors, but this is a traditional model from a long time ago, and they used scissors. So actually making these kinds of dolls, it was almost always a no-brainer that you had to use scissors. So uh, kind of get used to that if you're if you're wanting to make any of these. So what we're gonna do is start off here with our color side facing down, and I'm just gonna go ahead and first fold my paper in half diagonally into a big triangle. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fold it into another triangle here, bringing my sides together. Make sure you get a good crease at the top. So I've got it now here where the peak of my triangle's here and I have two open flaps on the right side. I'm gonna take everything now and fold it in half so that I know where the center is here. Get a good crease going. Open it up. Now I'm gonna put a crease that cuts through this side and this side halfway so that I can find where the middle is here in the middle of this area. So you can just kind of keep everything lined up and fold it in half. And this crease doesn't have to be perfectly perfect. We're gonna be using it later though, so you wanna to try to get it kind of going. And you just need to make it until you hit that middle crease that you'll see here when you fold it over. So you don't need to include this other part. So you get something like this. And this cave obviously it extends beyond that a little, but you don't need to make the full crease. And I'm gonna just do this way too so that I can get both of those creases kind of marked off and open it up. So you should get basically three creases that intersect here right in the middle. And we're gonna use that as a guide to take then our scissors. I'm gonna cut right along that little crease in the middle, right up to the middle point that I just found. So we're just gonna cut right up to there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open everything up. We're gonna look at the white side for a second here. You'll notice we've got all of these four little sides and uh, in this one, for example, the crease is going the right way, so I can fold this flap over. And at this point, if you wanted to kind of, you know, smooth out and make your crease a little cleaner, you can, but you want to essentially fold that towards the center. And then the other crease, you're going to need to reverse so that it comes into the center the right way as well. So that you get both of those flaps folded in. And we're going to just repeat those steps for the other three sides so that we get all four of these little flap areas here folded into the center. these all creased in. And I find sometimes that some areas do need to ref be refolded just a little bit because when you fold 
you've got so many layers on top of each other that one of them does shift just a tad and is not quite exactly the way you want it to be. So you might need to adjust one as you go along. But you should have something that looks like this, this cool little star shape. Now, if I flip everything over, what I want to do is kind of collapse everything here, but uh, the creases aren't going the right way right now. So what I'm going to do is right where the points are of my star, I'm just going to go ahead and fold that down. And you only need to focus really in this center part. We don't need to worry so much about these uh, edges right now. So you can just focus on getting these two creases in the middle here to be kind of clear. Half of them are right, half of them are wrong. Just get them going the right way. And then here, I'm going to make sure that the middle crease is standing up now. Do the same thing going this way too. And that way I can get everything kind of lined up, the, get the creases going the way I need to. Then you can just kind of let everything collapse and pinch together so that you can get a nice little kite shape and then just gently smooth out the tips to make sure everything kind of collapses nice. So we get something like this. Now I'm going to take the area that you see up here at the top and we're going to fold this part into the center. Open it up. Make sure that the crease in the middle goes both ways. And we're just going to open up this little pocket area here. Put a little pressure on the top and smush it all down so that we get this cool little shape here. And it's not straight across. You get this little kind of angle from where we cut the paper and stuff. Uh, but you should get something that looks like this. And I want to go around and repeat that step for the remaining three sides. So I can push this back over to the other side and do the left side here too. We just fold this over first towards the center. And then uh, make sure everything is nice and moving between left to right. And then pop it open. Put a little pressure there at the top to try and make sure it gets popped out right. Mine's not getting, there we go, to lay nice and flat. And return that flap over and then flip it over and just repeat the steps on the back as well so that we wind up doing this a total of four times, getting all of these areas to pop open and to lay flat. And it is pretty easy on these to get things not kind of going as smooth as you want them to. So you want to make sure when you do smush things out that everything gets laid out as smooth as it can. So we get all of those four sides folded in. Now I'm going to go ahead and just take one of these layers from the top and push it to the right, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. So now we're looking at these kind of separation of legs here. I'm going to take the first section we're just going to reverse it up. And um, what I want to do, if you want, you can do a couple things. You can make a crease first. It's going to come right up here into the center. And I don't want it to be necessarily flush with that edge. Just shy of it is good. And you can get that started if you want to, if it makes it a little easier for you, or you can eyeball it as you do things. But we're just going to start here by pushing everything through, get this inner part to become a mountain crease so that you can pinch a hold of that leg, if you will, and then you can kind of adjust things. Make sure that it comes right into the center and doesn't get too far pulled up, because you could essentially pull it all the way up to the top. We don't want that. We want it right in the center and keep just a tiny little bit sticking out. And you'll notice once we've done that, then if we take this part and open it up and lay it flat, you should be able to bring that edge right to the center about if you've got things kind of going right. And you might need to adjust a little bit and shimmy it over to the side, but you want to get that as close to the center as you can. And then I'm just going to take and fold one flap and two flaps, and then we're just going to repeat those steps on this one here. So you can kind of get it started if you want to, get that reversed up so that you can hold on to that leg and keep a good hold of where you want to have that so that you can get the crease going and then open everything up so that it comes right into the center. Open this one flap layer over again so that you get these three points. Kind of look at things in the back for a second. Just take one of those layers and fold it over so that everything is balanced. You should have 
you know, a, a solid shape here and a solid shape in the back as well. Now I'm going to take this front flap and we're going to pull it up as far as it'll go till it hits all that stuff there in the middle. You want to keep everything as straight as you can, get a good crease here and push that down. Then take the peak and bring it right deck back down to the center, make a little crease, open it up. Now I'm going to kind of just create a little cut that goes right through here and I don't want to cut the whole top part off so one thing we can do is just pinch here in the middle for a second and you can still see where that crease is that we made and take my scissors and just cut on that in a little bit maybe just a tad bit more than halfway you don't want to get too close to the edge because then everything can kind of fall apart on you get everything to lay down flat again so I've got this pocket kind of here of this cut and I'm going to take this back part and just make sure that that pops in there. So just make sure that that goes through. And then this part just naturally kind of falls down. We're just going to let that fold right there at the cut side. Keep things kind of straight in the back if you want to. So you get something like this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just um, take a little bit of the top part and fold it back so that her head is rounded. You'll know that that's then for the girl or the empress. I'm going to take a little bit of the stuff that's down here at the bottom and just fold it up. You don't necessarily want to bring it all the way up to the uh, kind of imaginary line that goes between things here. We just want to fold it up a little bit. And then we're going to fold everything up so that it matches up with those points so we get a nice flat uh, kind of edge to everything. Now the emperor and empress here are sitting down on their knees um, in a traditional Japanese pose so that's what you're looking at here is uh, her knees and then the wide sleeves of the uh, kimono kind of sitting here that you'll see on top. And the kimono that emperors and empresses wear is very full and uh, kind of big and boxy in shape so this kind of looks just exactly right. So we've got that part folded back, and then what we're going to do is just take these these arms and and fold them in. Now you can choose to either make it a really flat fold, or you can keep it kind of three dimensional. Um, especially if you're using nice thick paper, this probably won't hold it so well. But you can just gently just tuck a little bit of it inside, and if you want, of course, for it to be more stable, you can use a little bit of glue. Um, you can either choose to have them overlap inside of that little crevice or you can have them kind of connect together with a bit of glue and stick out in front. It's kind of up to you guys of how you want to do things or if you want it really flat you can just push down and create a crease too. So it's really up to you of what you want for the general dimensions of everything as you make this design. But we're just kind of gently folding in her, wrapping in her arms to give a completed empress or a female doll there. So the dimensions for her are the widest point there about six centimeters and from head to knees about five centimeters we're looking at. So she's about six centimeters wide and about five centimeters tall. So good thing to keep in mind if you're doing this for like a greening card. I think in general when you use a 15 by 15 centimeter paper it does give you a really nice little size that's perfect for a card but if you're trying to put two together um, you might wind up with something a little bigger than you wanted so you might want to make this just a tad bit tinier. But uh, that is our finished female doll or an empress. Uh, you can also think of her as uh, Orihime if the, from the story of Tanabata. All those different kinds of places are applicable for this. But that is our finished project for today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.